Hey Internet, Bill from Bill Loudon Science here, and today I want to show you one of my favorite at-home science projects. One that's, whoops, one that's fun to build, one that's fun to play with, and it can show us some really cool stuff about the science of physics. Here's what you'll need to build this at home. You're going to need a balloon. A couple of balloons, 12-inch latex party size balloon should probably be fine. Uh, you're going to need some CDs. Who doesn't have a pile of these sitting around from 2000? I've got a stack of them here. Now you can do this project with the nozzle of a water bottle or a Gatorade bottle, one of the ones that pops open. Uh, but if you're a classroom teacher like me, you're always looking for a way to make a project more affordable. Uh, so what I like to use for this, you can get these on Amazon and they're just empty paint strips. I think these were 0.17 ounces a piece. They come in strips of nine. And then I'll take a scissors cut them individually, and then cut the lids off. And then I have a little Dremel tool. So I know it's a little more hands-on, but I can use that Dremel tool to just drill a little hole in each one of these. Finally, the secret ingredient to this recipe. If you look it up online, they're gonna tell you to use hot glue or school glue. Hot glue dries very quickly, but it's not very durable. It breaks really easily, and then you can't play with your hovercraft anymore. And school glue is the opposite. It's much stronger, but it takes a long time to dry. And there again, if you break it, you can't play with it. So, if you do any kind of science at home, I always recommend using sticky tack or fun tack. Sticky tack allows you to stick your project together, but if it breaks, all you have to do is mold the glue and stick it back together and you can keep playing. This is great for working with kids projects because they break a lot and this allows the kids to fix it by themselves. Not only is it functional, but as you build, it's super fun to play with. How do we build it? Well, whenever I'm working with classrooms, what I tell them is I give them a little piece of this sticky tack and I tell them we need to make a worm that's about as long as our pointer finger. We can roll it with our hands. We can roll it on the table. We can pinch and stretch it. Oop, too long though. You want to keep it small enough that it's about as long as your finger. The next step is really the only difficult one. We need to get this piece of blue sticky tack around this larger hole on the nozzle because we want to stick that nozzle onto our CD. So we need to get it all the way around. And I like to say that, well, we'll take our blue worm here and we'll just bite onto the edge of that little cup of that nozzle. And then we're going to use our fingers and we're just going to kind of work it around. And now you'll see if your worm wasn't long enough the first time, just roll it out a little bit more. All right. We've got our blue worm in a circle here, and we're going to find the hole right on that CD, and we're just going to, well, okay, don't put it on your eyes. Put it on the table first. Stick that worm down onto the CD. And now we've got a nozzle on top, and we've got our CD on the bottom. When we blow up our balloon here, you can use a balloon pump, or you can just use your You don't need to make it too big. If it's too big, the balloon might be too heavy. So I'm gonna let a little bit of air out. All right, our balloon is the perfect size. We don't need to tie it. That's one of the reasons this project is great. We're gonna twist the balloon nozzle. That way the air won't escape because what we need to do is get the end, the nozzle of the balloon, on the nozzle of our hovercraft. So while it's twisted, we're gonna stretch out that side of the balloon we're going to fit it over the top of the nozzle. We're going to do it carefully because we don't want to rip the balloon. Then very carefully, we're going to untwist it. Now the air can all come out of the balloon. That's going to create a cushion of air underneath and our hovercraft can float freely on a cushion of air. So how does it work? Well, before we apply it, before we put the balloon on the disc, there is friction between the top of the CD and the surface of the table. So when we push the CD, it doesn't move very well. It doesn't slide very well. 
What we want to do is we want to get the CD floating on a cushion of air. That's going to reduce the friction and allow it to move more freely, similar to the way a real hovercraft works or an air hockey table. And that is accomplished by the air. The air is going to push through the hole on the CD. And that's going to cause the CD to float just a little bit on that pocket of air. And then the CD is free to slide all around on the table. So, what's the science? Well, when I teach this in classrooms, it's a great demonstration of the three laws of motion handed down to us by Sir Isaac Newton. You learned in school a force is a push or a pull. And this exerts or this demonstrates to us those three laws of pushes and pulls. Newton's first law of motion tells us that when an object is at rest, it doesn't want to start moving unless we exert a push or a pull on it. In other words, we want to exert a force. The same goes for an object that's already moving. It doesn't want to change course or stop or speed up unless we exert a force on it. This is called inertia, and our hovercraft is great for demonstrating this. Once we give it a push and it starts going one direction, it's not going to just magically change directions mid-push unless something exerts a push or a pull on it. Newton's second law tells us that force equals mass times acceleration, F equals MA. What that tells us is that if we exert more force, we're going to get more acceleration, either a bigger change in direction or maybe a larger or uh, acceleration or deceleration. What that means for our hovercraft is the harder we push it, the farther and faster it's probably going to go. So we know it's going to go the direction that we push it, but it also depends on how hard we push it. Newton's third law is the longest one to remember, but one of the most commonly said. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. <laughs> For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. In other words, when you exert a force, when you push on something, it pushes back against you. And when you pull on something, it pulls back against you. Likewise, air can actually exert a force. When the air pushes down against the desk, the desk pushes the air back up. And that push of air is what causes the hovercraft to float on the surface of the table. <laughs> and of course, we can ask ourselves at the end, what are some variables that might affect our project? What are some of the things that we can change to get different results? Well, of course, the first obvious variable is of course, the first obvious variable is the balloon. The more air we put into the balloon, the longer our hovercraft should fly. Now, is that necessarily true? Because, of course, the more air we put into the balloon, the heavier the balloon gets. Balloons do have weight. Air has weight. And so that might actually slow down our hovercraft. Uh, another thing that you could change with variables is maybe you want to put some toys on the CD. And if you put one heavy toy on one side but not the other, will your hovercraft fly as far as it would otherwise? So there you have it. The balloon hovercraft made out of just an old CD, an old water bottle nozzle, and a balloon. This thing will keep you racing for hours around the house. It'll work on the floor, on the tabletop, race it all over the house. Build a couple and race against your siblings. Draw some pictures on the balloon. I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you very much for hanging out at Bill Loudon Science, and we'll see you again soon.